one include Square, Mucklefugger Village, Transylvania. One hundred years later. From where I stand, and taking into consideration only those forests of high quality birch growing close to Castle Frankenstein, whose buildings we can convert into a modern factory with easy access to a more than ample supply of child labor, it is my opinion that we are looking at the biggest buggy whip operation in the entire Austro-Hungarian Empire in the whole world. And even as we usher our beloved village, am I going to thirst for you, Fraulein Gedulcic? Uh, I shall our beloved village into a new era of emancipation and progress. We shall rid this fair land once and for all of the stigma of the Frankenstein name and of that grossest of libels, the uh, mendacious and blasphemous tale of the Frankenstein monster, a myth that to this very day adults and corrupts. Uplifting and noble thoughts from learned counsel here, Dr. Rudolf Schnabel. That will be all for Anka Dildick. Commendable general welfare. Noble to serve the commonweal. How much does my bank stand to rig in? A bundle. A bundle? Well, learned counsel. Are you absolutely sure we can grab that whole estate, lock, stock, and barrel for tax arrears? Absolutely. Provided no Frankenstein shows up to pay the back taxes in the next six days. There hasn't been a Frankenstein living in that castle since the last lunatic was burned out. That was over a hundred years ago. <laughs> we women must fight for Ermintrude's rights again, Randy. Ermintrude, Aunt Matilda? Ermintrude, the great voiced ghost girl. In 1306, Ermintrude gave her life when she saved the herds of Mucklefugger Village by yodeling down an avalanche. Yodel? She possessed a superb pair of lungs. I heard that, Victor Frankenstein. <laughs> Candid candidly, Victor, why would you of all people return to Transylvania, where our family name is still employed to scare the hell out of small children? Surely the peasants in bread and genetically enfeebled memories can't be that long. <laughs> long enough to remember the so-called Frankenstein monster running riot all over their countryside. What is it you want so desperately at Castle Frankenstein, Victor? My patrimony. It's written on a candy wrapper, almond nugget. The family treasure. Received your share of your grandfather's estate in Palm Sterling, I believe. And you yours in gilt edged consuls. You squandered yours on wine, exotic nourishment, and crooked casinos. Nobody has any money? No money at all? Not a sou. Or should I say, in local parlance, not a per <laughs> any. Actually, you should say a hate me. But also hate me. And, um, you? Hardly a bean. A fortune spent defending legions of ungrateful widows uh, and grubby orphans, backing lost suffragette causes, uh, and, and hurling together this preposterous tea kettle. I did manage to say precisely 1,500 oak marks. Well, just enough to pay my entry fee. Entry? Uh, you, you are entering a, um... The Grand International Pan Balkan Lugovina to Bucharest Road Race. That is what I am here for. For the, uh, prize money. <laughs> no. The chance to win. Plus wearing bloomers. The symbol of emancipated woman. Emancipated bloomers? <laughs> hey now, you! Watch out for me, kid! Good evening. <gasps> Just like a male. Cut and run, eh? Break it! Just an animus peasant. Why is King Edsel recognized Ermintrude's sacrifice by awarding the women of Mucklefugger a voice on the village council? Greedy males have usurped that right. Oh, but we'll see about that now that we're home. Oh, 
beware of no flying bats. That's, uh, that's since my time. <laughs> Solid as Windsor Castle. Look, <laughs> ah, it's a bat. The old place never loses its charm. <laughs> I can't see a damn thing. ruins. Look at that foolish fat face. Those swinish jowls. Oh, yeah, mine Sophie had a place where found. Yeah, what, Elfie Glisser? Yeah, I look at that foolish fat face and the swinish jowls had Sophie had a place. Oh, stop it, you idiot. Toasted grade A almonds? Blended with dairy fresh sweet cream and almond nugget. Your grandfather dosed on the almond nugget to his dying day. Precisely. Untold riches conceal will destroy Castle Frankenstein. Only monster knows. Part of my inheritance. Poppycock. That's that scribble. My father had it from his father, the notorious 13th Baron. And the painter generously passed it on to me at Eton, where I spent my youth. Poppycock. I, I saw you. I know where I spent my youth. And I saw you Johnny, with all this gabble about wealth. Those and sheer rot. Weather. Blade on the feather. The scroll. Look, at it's grandfather, see? It's nearly illegible. Which merely proves that your grandfather was a typical physician. And, and the spelling. <laughs> it's atrocious. Who took his degree at that dreary, fifth-rate diploma mill. Go stack medical college. The message was the old boy's last gasp. And it means exactly what it says. The monster. And the treasure. Die burning weather. He's back, I tell you. Black. Knock it off. You heard me perfectly well. He's back. Who's back? Bloody Baron Frankenstein, the grave robber and baby killer's back. That's who's back, you impious antediluvianal fraud. Uh, there, Johnny, boating weather. Victor. Don't go in there, Victor. Feather. And in the trees. Surely, maybe. Next to mint humbug, my favorite form of confection. Jelly babies! Victor? Uh, oh, jelly babies! Victor! My jelly babies! But he was living like a pasha, secretly. That's why he built this hidden room, a place where he could ponder his scientific achievements and entertain a few chosen friends. Oh. The old lecture. 
laundry is feces and gigi's. Hmm. Flying is nubile doxies with sugared slabs of gooey Turkish delight. Almond nugget. Getting them tiddly on tankards of hot sliver of its toddy uh, with the kick of a Serbian mule. Mmm. I like it. Mm. Oh, ting. Bond of the ladies? Yes. All males of the Frankenstein line believe fervently in the double standard. Your grandfather, a dedicated dabbler in five guards thug, merely raised the ante, as it were. Mm. I remember the 13th Baron. He did things on a larger mm. scale than most. Mm. I was young, about 19. The student that ghosted at the minor in Pushtu dialect. I, my, ma my major was natural philosophy. Natural philosophy? Well, today we'd call it biology. I helped in the laboratory and took down his grandfather's dictation. Aunt Tilly, that would make you 108 years old. 109. Never underestimate the rejuvenating powers of royal jelly, my dear. Ah. You mean, uh, bees? Yes, yes, bees. Generations of them. Bees, bees, and sons of bees. There hasn't been a Frankenstein, not a live Frankenstein, in this village and in a hundred years. Nobody said lie. They perhaps ghosts. Yeah, of course. Oh, not these ghosts. They ride in a steam car. Steam. Very steam comfy, car. too, I tell you. Chief Fletcher, oh, put me down. You were right beside him when he created the monster. We're a dirty we're rich. Squalid with species. Demented. We will find the boodle. Oh, don't. Lay hands on Demented. the loot. There is no hidden money, understand? No boodle, no loot. Besides, the monster is dead. Well, not dead, not... Uh, uh, not precisely. The creature may as well be dead. Not if we bring it back to life again. No. You took dictation. Gregor Pittman. Gregor Pittman. It was Gregor... Uh, no. No? No, and oh, no. I can read the squiggles. She can read the squiggles. All right. The creature never burnt. Your grandfather and I substituted a dummy. Can you do? Took us days of sweating and straining to get the body into that hole where you found it. I could hug you again. The body has lain there for nearly a century. Let the poor creature rest in peace. <coughs> I wish to register for the Grand International Pan Balkan Bukovina to Bucharest Road Race. But that's all that will done. I have the fee. All the requirements mentioned is the payment of a fee. Now, where do I pay? It's 1500 Ostmarks. That's a mighty large sum for a lady. Lady? I am not a lady. Next window. <laughs> Look here, what is this? Oh, ma'am, it is a disgrace and a tragedy. These poor lasses are about to be cast into the street. Why? <laughs> Who are they? They're wayward girls, ma'am. From the village cradle of compassion and last refuge for strayed young women. The interest of the building mortgage is due. It is held by the municipal council, and they are foreclosing in order to tear down the cradle of compassion. To put up a modern buggy wash. The latest up-to-date progressive idea from New York City. Enough of that! Get up! <laughs> well, well, pay 
up. Oh. How much is the interest? Exactly 1,500 Osmarks and seven Fennigs. Anyone got seven Fennigs? Thank you for the seven phoenix. My name is Gudrun Gadulgic. I'm the Burgomeister stenographer. And I'm... I know who you are. Well, then surely you know he'll dismiss you. Dismiss? Well, you know. Talk you out. If he sees you talking Castle to... Castle Frankenstein. They're about to grab it. Oh, how can they do that? Back taxes. Law says if noble families don't pay their taxes for 600 years... 600 years? Actually... 601. That's the indigent noble clause. Temporarily strapped aristocrats. They get an extra year on account of hardship. Um? And if they don't pay, the municipal council grabs the property. The estate? The everything. Six days from midnight tonight. We can stop them. Fashions? of a voluptuous young lady of high rank discussing her secret longings in private amours. He would never hide his note in a book with such an intriguing title. He chose something ordinary, something well known like uh, Fanny Hill. Cabinet of Venus. Confessions of an innocent wife. <laughs> innocent wife. Chinese. Shiraz. Brandy. Chinese. Shiraz. Critique of pure reason. And you can. Hmm. Think. Edition for children. Victor. Victor. For children. Oh, Victor. I have. Specially edited for young persons. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> the perfume garden of Sheikh Nefsawi. Illustrated. You found the note. I found the note. Found... You found the note. Obs observations, notes, and dissertations dictated by the 13th Baron Frankenstein, Frankenstein. to Fraulein Matilda Frankenstein, sophomore and honor student in natural philosophy at Goldstadt Medical College. It's impossible. Well, not a, 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 if he... Um, or uh, on the other hand, if, if she was... Or, or, or if he, in turn... Uh, or if one had a, a rope sling. Or a, a large woven basket. Or a small brewery. The Baron's dictation. The notes were chemically cooled to the fire decay. Your hereditary passion in a hot little hand right. merely oh. raised the temperature to the flashpoint. The information self destructed. It was your fault. Well, I can hardly be held responsible for your excessive lust. He knew where the notes were, he knew what was in them. Uh, not well enough to do what you're about to ask me to do. You could try before you hair off a tin pot little race. I am not, as you so tactfully put it, hairing off to any tin pot race. You paid the fee. No, I didn't. 
I spent the money before I got to the registry office. Widows. Orphans. Wayward girls. Wayward girls? Wayward girls. And a breeding, grasping in his for counsel. I tell you, if that was my wife, I'd really knock her back. Here. It's your right to be stupid. Girl, it's your birthright, right, lady. Get you over here. Your niggas in a twist, girl. Come on, hurry up. Come on, come on. 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 Come Racket schnabel. Can't even think with all this noise. And what exactly is this ERA? I believe it stands for. Uh, the, uh, well, ERA. Ermintrude's rights again. Ermintrude's rights. Representation. A vote. A voice on the municipal council. The bloody cheek. <laughs> they, the ladies. Claim the aforesaid rights date back to an edict signed by wise King Edsel in 1306. They are agitating for rights obtained through an edict signed by an imbecilic 340-pound pubescent glutton who died in his bath after voting at a single sitting nine servings of spotted dog and finally gave up the royal ghost bawling for his favorite wooden duck. <laughs> I'd as soon see the shrews leap from the cake and cavort in the buff at the men's annual rabbit bludgeoning and fair baiting stag. <laughs> Aunt Matilda. The monster. I can't. Why can't you? Yes, why can't you? Because it would be cruel. Sparking life in an outcast doom never to be human. Human? <laughs> a cry, a smile, a tear, a laugh. If you mean feel, believe you me, I... I am feeling that uh, my whole head is throbbing. If, if you only knew my, my fault. Oh, not now, Victor. My I must go and tell my, my girls the fairing. would be proud of you girls. They are the eccentric old Amelia. Uh, no, we don't have any fuse bloomers, dear. The Peggy men are lovely. Peggy, 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 Into bloomers and out of bandage, girl. What are those singular garments our females are wearing? They call them bloomers. Bloomers. Ludicrous. Baggy trousers. They're a symbol. Symbol? Of their struggle. Struggle, eh? We'll fight them with a slogan. Well spoken, Irving. How about, um... Women of Mucklefugger. Down with trousers and up with skirts. I don't believe that would quite convey the... Um, no? The devil take it. You just send them this message. Tell them that Burgermeister says, go without bloomers or go to jail. That's it. That'll bring the trouble to the senses. Do you really think so? Sure, Bob. Deliver my message. Appointment to beckon his to his royal his royal highness Edward Prince of Wales a banner leaf like a punk of gold plasty purple Columbia red odd land must be a priceless leaf <laughs> We're not budging, Herr Burgermeister. Ha! 
Oh, get off me foot! Ah, come on, you shabbat! Safer! Come on, get yourself together! Oh, goodness. Charge! Charge? Charge? can we expect? Severest penalties? Full 
majesty of the law? No, no. Those are our wives out there, the mothers of our children. <sighs> Treachery will have to do. What damn fool opened the spigots on that blasted fountain? Those shameless, barefaced jades, they... They wet my cockade, drenched me. Your beautiful saber. Oh. And then, and then, it'll rust. You don't want your beautiful saber to rust. Oh. Damn the saber. <laughs> Breeze, adventurous as those shields. My best man. Feldfabel is Stalin. They attacked him. No. Yes. With knives. Razor sharp knives. Good lord. They debagged him. Debagged? Oh. Removed his trousers. Oh. In the line of duty. We'll give him a decoration. Why don't we just give him another pair of bags? I mean, trousers. A decoration? Like the blue max. See here, this fellow only lost his trousers. The Black Irving. One day it will become Transylvania's most coveted award. Obsidian in a circle of diamonds. Diamonds? That's the order of first class. Yeah. This authorizes whatever you call him. The Black Irving. Fourth class. That's obsidian surrounded by rhinestones. <laughs> After all, the lot only sacrifices uh, bags. <laughs> Absolutely compiled. We'll get we'll 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 the inheritance what they want. After the Herr Superintendent of Police has been mauled, tickled, his manhood trifled with, and he himself finally drenched. A voice on the council, a vote, anything. Are we milk sops? Lily livered cuckolds? Wench's footstools? My cockade. His saber, that poor de bag chap. Their ringleader, that Frankenstein female. Once she is gone, poof, it is over. But how? The hussy pants to race her steam car. I understand, however, that she is without funds to pay her entry fee. Get the funds to her. Our money? She'll never take it. Use imagination. Use chicanery. Use cash. She'll take it. She'll race. She'll be gone. Perhaps forever? You won. Why do I feel so hungry? I'm drunk. have a chocolate bar with you. You are with almonds. The women won. Strange. Oh, I feel rather fuzzy. Walnuts? Dizzy. Uh, dried fruit? Granola would do. Matilda? You are a good girl. A trance brought on by, by the smoke. Take down my words for posterity, child. Every word. This may be total recall. To remember everything. Every word the old man dictated. My servant Fritz is nearly useless. <laughs> His dress is indescribable, his socks droop. He's either a moron, an imbecile, or an idiot. I'm not sure which. Investigate this. What a cross to bear. He is a true Transylvanian snob. I obtained at great expense. Ten gallons, imperial gallons, of Tibetan yak milk. This priceless fluid I subjected to incredible pressures in order to force the phlogistic life substance to coalesce into something that appears to the uninitiated to be cheese. 
discarding the whey, I then broke up the curds, steeping them in water to particularize the vital element. A slow process. Immersion has wrinkled the skin of my fingers like overripe lychee nuts. <coughs> Incidentally, one can obtain possibly fair lychee nuts from the Chinese place. Ah, phlogistic life, electricity, lightning. <laughs> you get drenched if you use a kite like that dim with the dabbler, Benjamin, what's his name? Besides, sometimes it's very difficult to get it up. I love the people and yokels, but I envision the day when vast public utilities companies will supply electricity to the pay subscriber. I hope they soak the peasants plenty. I'm sure they will. I dedicated myself to the demanding task, to the exacting standards, to the micrometric precision called for if I were to succeed. The smallest details came under my keen scrutiny. My intellectual peers, the entire scientific community, minus that pompous Prussian ass, Dr. Warman of Goldstadt Medical, marveled at my attention to detail, my dedication to duty, the quivering aesthetic sensibilities that recoiled from even a minor violation of classic beauty. A coarse booboo outraged my cultivated notions of divine symmetry. Am I a gifted artist? Or merely a toiler in the boneyard of medical pith. Futile question. There's no turning back. I possess the essential secret. This is the lethal part. Crucial. Death-defying. Or we might blow ourselves to smithereens. By the sacred relics of San Andreas, the faultless stolen by Spavian mercenaries from Bukovina Cathedral in 1609. Which are? Oh, uh, look at those. Uh, how many? How many? How many? Like three. Uh, three. Together with the second and fourth metacarpals. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, I'll do it. Nobody wants a holocaust on her conscience. Uh, 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 uh. Ouch, watch it, Victor. It's the fifth time you crack my knuckle with your damn buckle. Don't put your knuckle under my buckle. Well, it takes two to tango, lover. I, Joe, I think you got something there. <laughs> yeah, an old bromide. Stop, stop. Ah! Uh, did it move? I, no. I, no, the, 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 the liquid is squirting out of the tubes. I heard a sound. It's getting my stockings wet. A, a living sound. Oh, it's my shoes. They just squish when I walk. Wait, I, I, I could have sworn that I... Uh, uh, Up. We've just begun the fight. We'll chat with us about the, the uh, reproductive cycle of the long necked, sea going, salt water, can distract, Danish and giant kill. Tell me, Doctor, the long necked, sea going, salt water, can distract, Danish and giant clear. It's fantastic. We're picking up the BBC. You might consider that uh, more spinnable. Throw the switch. Not that one, that's FM. FM? FM hasn't been invented yet. Don't talk logic, neither has radio. Do as I tell you, it may be our last hope. Huh. There, you see. 
That hand we're through. No. Well, I like the music. There is no music. It must work. Tilly, you're certainly game. I, I'm speaking of game. I'm famished. I, I'll call up the Chinese place. The egg roll is good and the rice yang chow isn't too greasy and they deliver. Hello? Hello? Fuck up, old girl. Hello? Hello? Dead. He's dead. You don't understand. Of course I do. You just crank this little handle and pull the wet food. We tried. We failed. We can't fail. Why not? Because it worked before, and that's exactly how I did it before. You did it. This time. Oh, well, I suppose I can now stop doing penance or creating a living being. We never knew anything but universal loathing. It's all right now. I'm ready to call the whole thing off. Quite frankly, I'm petrified. Me too. I'm oh. scared. <laughs> Baron's treasure could still be recovered. <laughs> Nothing says we can't do without this badly stitched mass of flesh, moldy bones, and ill matched limbs. <laughs> Does it? wayward girls and golly all the women of Mucklefugger we want you to race man oh but I, I can't take your money I can't oh sucks please we got to show those bully boys down at town hall don't we oh get in there and win this one for the goat girl I can hardly believe my luck. I'm going to race. Oh! Let me out. Let me out. I, 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 I'll, I'll hold my breath. I hold my breath. I won't fail. I, 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 oh. I was about to enjoy the fruit of my gargantuan labors, the solution of the servant problem by the creation of the perfect gentleman's gentleman. Unfortunately, Fritz dropped the brain I planned to use. So I prepared to fumigate the laboratory and incidentally to get rid of that incredible nincompoop Fritz. Then it occurred to me that if I got rid of Fritz, I would have no need to fumigate the laboratory. <laughs> A prophetic saved of all that, eh? <laughs> Monk and celibate of science that I was, I set out on my search to replace the somewhat scrambled and now totally revolting organ that Fritz had maliciously impaired. While rehearsing a few Terpsichorean figures from our national dance, the Farkleberry Gavotte, an exhilarating consciousness-raising exercise, I was suddenly disturbed by a heart-rending wail outside the window. <laughs> Curiously, most of the mourners were women. Schultz was the village butcher, apparently a fellow of enormous endowment, quite prominent and short, a man of considerable parts. Everyone seemed to love Schultz. 
for the quality of his meat. I wonder. I now had a brachycephalic cerebrum, which ingeniously I squeezed into my creature's rather dolly chocophallic cranium. If you think that's nothing, you try stuffing a round brain into a long, narrow skull. Schutz's brain was docile and obedient. Obedient, that is, if I kept the request simple, like uh, two kilos of sweetbreads, please, or kindly remove your thumb from the scale while weighing my veal chops. Not another word. I, 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 I'd rather... I... It was Yodel Me Down Day, a sportive occasion commemorating the heroic sacrifice of Ermintrude, the great moist goat girl. Once a year, all Mucklefugger turns out for an artless sort of lark when, after imbibing heartily from a brim jorum of invigorating local farkle berry wine, the village bumpkins happily leap into Ermintrude's fountain to prove the water therein harmless of good, clean sun. <laughs> well, there I was, enjoying this hygienic act of homely valour when I caught the eye of a fellow lover of tradition, enchanting wench, slim young thing, employed as an apprentice hide scraper in the local tannery. At any rate, we hit it off famously, and soon I was giving the young person the high tea chez moi. Where was I? Oh, yes, that piece of cake from the knacker's yard. Tea. We were getting to know each other over a <coughs> cup of lap song, souchong, a smoky blend to which I'm particularly partial. When my creature takes one look at my bit of crumpet and, well, let me tell you, it was a close call. Brutus like an elephant and must. A rogue male, if you construe my meaning. <laughs> what saved the show was the bleat of a tin whistle. Some bounder at the window, shamelessly fingering his flippy flute. Public nuisance. The crude use of this fellow's instrument apparently stunned the creature. After my near par broiling, Clara and I watched ourselves. Oh, how we watched ourselves. There could be no more dalliance with my wicked wantons, no more slap and tickle with the village wenches, no nice afternoons with my naughty nymphs. The thing has a little bit of a profligate mink. The sex heard of rutted rabbits. They were well needless to say I kept it strictly out of boudoir and bedroom. And Clara, laboring at my side, an active partner and fearless participant in my investigations, is my ardent witness. I diligently pursued intimate knowledge of Schultz, the late lamented village butcher, as the key to absolute control of the newly minted mind of my monster. My sleuthing revealed that there had been a governess, English Groat, by name, Nanny Groat. They called her Nanny Groat. She had a brother, William uh, Billy Groat, but that's another can of worms. I could control the creature by trilling a note on a flipple flute to stun it, by tooting a toy trumpet to lull it, or I could appeal to its memories of a formidable female by dressing as a vanished governess, Nanny Groat.
Victor, what are you waiting for? Are you familiar with the Farkleberry Gavotte? No, I'm not, and I don't care. I've fed it out of root cookies. I even tried soaking sweet back in milk. Ugh. <laughs> prune whip. Prune whip? It adores prune whip. Nothing I do will make it reveal the treasure. There is no treasure. Dance. Loves to dance. It can do the Peabody. It can mazurka. I've tried flings, polkas, and reels. We've bunny hugged <laughs> and maxed. It can even execute a neat sarabanda, and I don't even know the sarabanda. Uh, do you know the sarabanda? Treat that creature humanely. I'll be back. Mind what I told you, you nasty little man. Sugar plum, my quivering aspic. It is I, Victor, your great big jelly baby, Randy Miranda. Randy, Randy, my deep dish apple pie, take care of my, of my life, Randy. Randy, my donkey's the butter start. This creature is dangerous, a deviate. Bent! Bendy! My super love, my souffle from Manière. My great sister, Wastrels remain to carry on the family name. Let them know that the 13th Baron wishes only to usher in progress, to bring the local mud kickers into the 19th century with a splash. And who better to aid me than one of this emancipated epoch's greatest innovators, my dear friend, benefactor to all mankind, and sanitary engineer by appointment to Her Majesty Queen Victoria, Sir Thomas. Crapper. I may be more clever. I may be more queer. But we'll pull together. Crapper. You've come a cropper. My cherished dream of bringing modern hygiene to this brackish Balkan backwater went gurgling down the drain. An evil smelling black liquid gushed forth from the bowels of the earth. My glorious thunderbox was kaput. 
Sir Thomas Crapper's engineers had blundered into a vast underground reservoir of gunk. A pool full of rock oil. Petroleum. I will be coining it. In China, the lamps gulp kerosene. In the United States, the Americans are bonkers about petrol. There is no end to the wealth. That senile old buffoon. No, that he, he was... He knew. This nauseous black swill turns the meekest church mouse into a lion, <laughs> greedy for a taste of the spoils. They will raise the castle, strip the forests, Foul the lake, poison the very fields and pastures, trample, crush, and topple, harry and hunt our wild animals, exterminate the innocent kind. There's a small price to pay for progress. I ordered the main pipe capped, and when I rescued my faithful creation from the flames, I placed him in suspended animation after charging him to guard this terrible secret for all time. Kidneys and champagne. Lamb kidneys. This order cash. One jar pickled ortolan tongues. Oh, cash. A lot of money here, man. Adds up. Mou à la fée compoise. Freeze dried. Naturally. Adds up. How crass. Cross your heart and spit. Uh, uh, not there, you slobbering hayseed. Uh, there, in the spittoon. <laughs> We're rich. One unpretentious, decent little bottle of wine, please. Incredibly wealthy once again. Uh, loaded, in fact. With backers. Bakers. Mm-mm. Lolly, too dumb. Oh, we the Mary Andrew. Not bakers. Backers. A syndicate. The syndicate. Big butter and egg men. Butter and egg men? No hocus. N.J. N.J.? New Jersey. That just happens to be in the United States of America. United States of America. Factory. A buggy with factory. Peanuts. Peanuts? Well, buggy, uh, buggy whips are peanuts. Uh. My lips are sealed. Once again, it has become a nest of Frankenstein. My oh, great and oh, hearty you created my ears. You speak as though there was still a mad baron and a monster. Oh, the sins of the fathers. And what law will you invoke? Public safety? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Forever. Burn them out. 
We are, after all, the respectable element. Helmut, you're the only one in all Mucklefugger who understands me. Oh, you, Irving. I am mean, Schwerbaum. <laughs> I've been out talking to my stoolies, Irving. We've got public opinion behind us. We can do anything we like. Even a good old-fashioned towering and feathering? While the sturdy yeomanry illuminate the scene with flickering torchlight? Such a public-spirited and... Uh, schnapps. And exemplary spectacle is not unthinkable, Irving. Ducked, I sliced his ear right off, and he never said nothing. Not a word. I put my hand in her purse. There was a bloody ferret in there. Bit oil. Never do that again. I'll tell you, mate, she's got everything a man could want. Six foot, wide shoulders, mustache. Who holds the steaming hand trail, then? Over here. Big, fat, black bill. You think you could get those pig farmers and manure mulchers to march up that hill to the castle and do their civic duty? A bill. Tall feathers. Mars. Mars. I come big fat black bill. Be barbaric and base. <laughs> Good night, Herr Superintendent of Police. Swear out. We're going to burn them out, big bad black bill. Shut your gob. Never keep your hands out of other folks' pockets. The respectable element. This way, please. The respectable element. This way. There she was, beside the bar rail, drinking pink gin, or two bits, and the swollen whiskey barrel stood in awe. Beside her, the monster and the escape, they know. I can't stand it, the anxiety, the tension. Well, I'm going for a stroll. That Chinese place, they never delivered. There's only that cone there left. If the cheese is gone, I could snack on the lamb kidneys. It's a policeman. The one with a funny hat and a cute moustache. <gasps> the bait. They have taken the bait. <laughs> oh, Hocus. The big butter and egg men. I'll hide. You got to. I don't feel very sociable. No. Fear not, fair lady. My chaps have surrounded the castle. <laughs> the lads will uh, drive off the rabble. Some may fall, but is that not the great game? Oh, thank you, Superintendent. <laughs> You're salivating on my glove. I know. It's misting my monocle. <laughs> the gloves are kid. Really? Yes, antelope. Oh, you mustn't allow a bit of dank antelope to come between friends. No? No. Oh, I'm sorry, but it's not every day I en encounter a beautiful baroness. Well, that's quite all right. Not every day I get a hickey on my wrist. Your most obedient servant. Oh, uh, in that case, would you mind removing the rowel of your spur from my ankle? Right? Left? <laughs> my concern for you, madam. I was simply carried away. You could be named as an accessory. To? Well, illegal possession of a monster. Illegal 
In a grave crime here in Transylvania, madam. What? It's a Frankenstein. Nonsense. Would Victor risk everything? the very moment he was about to bring off the biggest financial coup of a lifetime. Oh, I hear Superintendent of Police Schwerbron at this very moment. Oh, what have I said? At this very moment? Oh, my lips are sealed. Not to. Oh. I feel. My Seder. Oh, it's not that. Uh, I may swoon. Oh, I shouldn't. If you must. No, you must tell me. I won't. You will. I can't. You can. I can't. Can you? Can you not? Oh, you'll never forgive me. I was supposed to take it to their agent. Agent? The Hohoka Syndicate. Rock Hall. Earth soaked with the rock oil that oozes from the gigantic multi million off mark vine. Located in our own backyard. Multi million off mark vine? Rock oil? Tell me more. Your monocle is misty. <laughs> One mean looking monster hurt with. Oh, let's go, Richard. He looks ever so severe. Oh. That's not funny, monster. What are these preposterous rumors of a Frankenstein monster swear bomb? Part of my campaign to scare the fat swine off. Is it working? We are too late. You mean the scoundrel has already decamped? No, but he will soon, hauling bags of Yankee gold. The traitor plans to peddle our cherished national monument to a pack of uh, unscrupulous, avaricious American money grubbers. We have got to stop him. How? Buy him up before they do. Buy? This is my grandfather's shirt. I don't care. It's disgusting. You know, you better watch that banker. Schlockmacher? Schlockmacher. Yeah, and that flavoring little snake schnitt. Schnitt. I better rush down before they steal the silver plate. Mm -hmm. They've had plenty of time to check the hallmarks. <laughs> They're probably dividing up the swag. Let Schnitt present the terms. He knows the business and it suits a sense of conviction. He ought to. One year for fraud and a suspended sentence for enticing minors into escrow. <laughs> Uh, 
Darling. Uh-huh. <laughs> My dear Baron von Frankenstein, how like the days of yours, uh, the golden age of which we all lament the passing. <laughs> what you heard passing was a wagon and two dray horses. They come by every night to loot whatever the municipal government hasn't carted away during the day. You should nab that gang, Schwerbaum. In a week or two, and they'll put you out of business. Ah, no, 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 Superintendent of Police Schwerbaum. I'm sure the Baron only jests. The, the usually advantageous occasion puts us all in uh, high spirits. <laughs> yes. Well, we'll skip the spirits. Those picklocks did our cellar last night, and all they left was near beer. Now, I personally wouldn't go near that beer. And neither would you, if your nose for brew was half as keen as your nose for easy money. So, before the rise in property values... Surely, uh, around here, surely the Baron is aware that this estate is about to be seized? Not if I pay the taxes and penalties uh, with uh, this letter of credit. Let me see <laughs> that. Baron von Frankenstein's property is not in question, Herr Schwarzmacher. I, for one, assume the best. That's a deal I can live with. <laughs> I'll assume the best. You gentlemen will assume the tax arrears, the penalties, the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth mortgages of which and the obligation to pay one million three hundred thousand pounds into my Swiss bank account. Monstrous why I wouldn't a man's a cut purse. Well, the town boss. Madame, what an enchanting surprise. I'm overcome. Say the word, cupcake. Maybe they'll name the factory after you. Bottle. The rule puts a pistol to our heads, like our common highwaymen. Our vulgar footpad. Baron, I speak to him. I know that a noble heart beats beneath the Baron's paisley vest. This is Nita Hayden. Hungan. 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 The vest isn't paisley, it's brocade. And besides, I intend to die a rich old dowager, just dripping in diamonds. Auditors, they worked all night in the kitchen. I wanted them to have a last squint at the account books. I thought I could smell something. Cooking the books, eh? Probably the most spectacular culinary feat carried out in the castle kitchen since my great 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 grandfather roasted a peasant. Surely you mean a pheasant? No. A peasant. Feudal prerogatives really counted for something in those days. Put that down, Smith. It's silver. It's nothing of the sort. It's pewter. Do you see what I mean, Schlock the Hammer? Schlock? Mm. Yes, sir. Mark. That's right. How would you like perfect strangers coming into your castle and fingering your knickknacks? Hmm? Schlock the Hammer? I have a good mind to walk out of this meeting. Nonsense. If you had a good mind, you'd hardly be bandying words with a cretin like Smith there. Hmm? Go see. Who's at the door, Schnitt? Well, chop chop. I bet he hasn't even read the petroleum chemist's report yet. <laughs> but you have, haven't you? And in the morning, Jack Black, too, we're uh, here. On page one, take this. The Renault. The Thompson Flyer and the Marmon Wasp in first, second, and third places. The three leaders in the great race, all with petrol engines. No, no one disputes the value of... Uh, if the Baron would only clear up a few minor legal points, his great aunt Matilda's rights and, and specific legal procedures 
jurisprudence. Napoleonic code. Uh, Roman law. Common law. Uh, the law of the jungle. Madame, something about you reminds me of Ermintrude, the uh, great voice goat girl. Do you yodel? Need Telegram, pigeon post for need of hunger. This sad intelligence by special messenger, there will be no legal impediment due to Matilda Frankenstein. There was a loud hiss, a towering plume of vapor. She rose as she would have wanted to. Parboiled by steam. To meet her maker in heaven. How long will it take to dig anything human out of that rock slide? Weeks. Roger. What? Life must go on. We must consult our auditors, Schlockmacher. And raise the cash. Deepest gloom in Hohokus. Surely, my friends, in the near future, you can peddle the American some less favorable parcel of Transylvanian real estate. Letter of credit? No, no, Herr Baron. Well, put away your letter. I'd better rest than, uh, what was that? Uh, the butter and egg? Uh... Egg man. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Ho, ho, ho. Locus. <laughs> <laughs> but it is true. At midnight, all of this. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> I need a hug and... <laughs> 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 up, up, Mr. Fagel, I get home. For God's sake, son. Sorry, did you fool? Can't you see the man is playing hardball? Gentlemen? Wait. You're late, Schwerbaum. You almost missed the signing. The winner, the actual winner of the pan Balkan race is not, as reported earlier, an automobile propelled by a petrol engine. But my spice, my informants, my snoops, my trustworthy stooley. The steam car. The race was won by a steam car. Oil is done, through. Petroleum stocks plunge on the Transylvanian bourse. Some Johnny come lately called Rockefeller, stumping shares. Automotive stocks are off 20 points. Look here. Steam cars. Steam. Steam cars. Yes. Did I hear you say there's a bull market in steam cars? Steam. Steam cars. Gentlemen, they need fuel. Wood. Acres of wood out there. Firewood. The finest fuel in the world. Nice try, but no go. Too much ash. If you've ever had your ashes hauled, oh boy, you know what a nuisance that can be. Get about wasteful wood fuel, um, oil. Uh, oh. <laughs> coal oil! Millions in coal oil. Our chemist's analysis showed this rock oil, high in sulfur, worthless for coal oil or kerosene. Who makes petroleum anyway? Dirty, smudgy, dreadful stuff. You have what you want. We do? Yes. Birch. The birch you plan feloniously to grab. The future, gentlemen, is Ooh. in buggy whips. Yeah, buggy whips. Uh, buggy whips. There goes the judge. Do you think the old crop knows something? That steam cars don't have buggy whips? You must sign. Why? Because it's almost midnight. No, because, uh, because, uh, uh, at midnight, the Hocus Syndicate, the, the, uh, the big butter and egg. Stand with me, please, Jack. Yep. Two, two handkerchiefs. 
Irish linen, one flannel nightcap with red tassel. Tassel? Tassel? This is no letter of credit. This is a fraudulent document. It's a laundry list. There is nothing fraudulent about this laundry list. I can account for every item on it. <coughs> A rotten credit risk. A bankrupt. A consummate knave. Oh, take that. No, no, no. Uh, you, you will hear from my solicitors, Messrs. Dummock, Flanky, Jop, and La Bonza. Messrs. Dummock, Flanky, Jop, and La Bonza. Are we too late? No, just in time. What for? To be evicted. Incarcerated. Well, uh, evicted and then incarcerated. I know what hanky panky you were up to, Victor. He was, he was. And he... You and your fancy woman. Hey. She is, she is. <laughs> I'll see about you, <laughs> Judas. And you can leave. What is this invasion? My mom, you're the guardian of public order. Get this rabble off municipal property. You lay your hands on me, you ruffian. You tin horn soldier. And I'll have your epaulets. And his pips. And your buttons. And his cocaine. Don't forget his cocaine. And whatever other foppish insignia of rank in which some incompetent superior saw fit to cloak your arrogant and monumental self-regard. Don't take his trousers. If you take his trousers, you'll get the black bird. Out! The whole lot of you out! <laughs> it was still, madam, an unresolved matter of taxes. Well, a woman's castle is her home. Well, I, actually, that's a man's uh, home is his... Uh, Don't you tell um, me what it is, you forlorn hope, for the perpetuation of a once noble line. Well... This should cover the arrears, the penalties, and there may be even a small gratuity left over to compensate you for passing up any other dubious deed you had in mind this particular evening. Steam. I heard the noise. <laughs> but our telly was already past them and on the way to win. All there, but unfortunately, not valid. Not valid, my eye. Cash of the realm. Legal tender. Good as gold. Guess I can't get out of my piggy bank. To be valid, the monies have to be paid in the presence of a quorum of the municipal council. I regret, dear ladies, that we, my colleagues and I, do not, before the law, constitute such a quorum. Do we? Why not? Twenty citizens would be a quorum. Twenty enfranchised citizens. Hell, where am I, sir? Countess, go on. Thirty, forty, maybe even more. Midnight. The hour is late. The company is charming, I'm sure. However, this is ridiculous. Ridiculous? Herr Bürgermeister Niederhangen? Of course. Why, you're nothing but, 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 but women. <laughs> Give me that hat. Go back to your, 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 your kitchen. <laughs> anatomical evidence, I venture to say that... Uh, no, you simpleton, are they a quorum? I... I... I'm afraid so. 
every day. Something scandalous. Dear, I hope that doesn't mean we have to open a new wing. No, ma'am, not right off. Oh, well, that's settled then. Oh, Jilly, there's no money in Wayward Girl. Uh, that is a... Uh, unless, um... Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> Epilogue. Vengeance. Compassion and other odds and ends. Baskerville, bring up the house. You'll feel better after you eat. Find the monster before the bucolic but bloodthirsty bumpkins hack it to bits. So you'll let us use the lavatory? To concoct some dreadful cure all? Some nostrum involving the adulterated sliver of it? Gee, nature, plum brandy. A raw petroleum, why not? It's a gold mine. Oh. The monster, the your monster, will be legal. How? By working for you. Unemployed monsters, illegal. Gainfully employed monsters, legal. I mean, it's the law, Aunt Tilly. It's the law. The law. It's the law. The law. Yes, it's the law. Sorry, Come on, love. Could I interest you ladies in a couple of tickets at a policeman's ball? Down with your policeman's ball. <clears throat> Michael Fugger, uh, police station. I'd like to report a missing monster. We get dozens of monster reports this time of the year. UFOs, we call them. Unverified Frankenstein observations. Silly dame. Claims she's got a close encounter, third kind. A monster in a button-down collar Oxford shirt. Four sizes too small for him. Burned out wing, old Frankenstein collar. Don't worry, lady. The chaps will bring an elephant gun. Well, that's what the man at the police station said. The mm. south wing. Hope the time. one that was burned. Yeah, the rabble. <laughs> they even burnt the roof down.
I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. Poor lamb. We mustn't let you catch your death of cold. Come on, come with me. No longer be gold. My answers distemper, abscess, assist, winds, pimples, carbuncles, cankers, or other forms of corruption. And that includes corn smut. Yay! And verily! Even corn smut. Together with tennis elbow. Housemaid's knee. Bilateral self indratus. Bandy legs. Or dishpan hands. Shipment fever, rinder pest, Dutch elf disease. If you droop, flag or languish at home or at work, do not despair. Vim, the big you are. Can still be yours. You do not need surgery, bloodletting, cupping, or leeches. Nature's own, time tested, and earth compounded remedy. Authentic Transylvanian rock oil. Aged in the barrel. Decanted by master mixers and sold as the Baron's own bodybuilding and bitters panacea. Made him the man he is today. He made her the woman she is today. Into the crowd, darling. Now, ladies and gentlemen, your first opportunity to purchase the Baron's own bodybuilding universal. Bitters and petroleum panacea. Only 1,000 per penny. Keep at half the price. Throw away your invitation. Throw away your... Your cough mixture. Pour it down the stop hole. Stick it out. Away in a cupboard. Falsa wood. Hey, he, he's a fake. He's a He's a humbug. He's a humbug, that monster. Oh, no. I saw with my own eyes the door that he tore off at the funny room at the castle. Ha, ha, sir. It's the substandard walls, bribed inspectors. Ha, 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 pay off, um, uh, woodpeckers, mice, uh, beavers. Ha, what this country needs, my friend, is a new building code for baronial castles. I've got you now. Victor Frankenstein. You, sir, are a disgrace to the name of Frankenstein. I disown you. You illustrious cad. <laughs> How was it? Somewhere in the dark recesses of his brain, he could feel grief. Oh, that the grief at betraying the old Baron's secret would sap the superhuman strength that you exploited so profitably. Canton and Bukovina Inn of the Seventh Happiness? Where the Bonton order wanton? Oh, do you have your puck, dearie? Oh, I'm the goalie, aren't I, ducks? Puck. Yeah, you can't play field hockey without a puck. You can't play a midsummer night stream without a puck. Your order? Mm. Egg rolls, Russian chow. Yeah, not too greasy. Manalego with snow peas. Snow peas. Pastrami. Pastrami and the side. And I ordered leachy nuts. I never ordered leachy nuts. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I never ordered leachy nuts. Hello. Is there anyone there? Hello. Uh, anyone out there? <laughs> yes, yes, 
you can love. <laughs>